What's good? It is your girl Tracy AWM and I have decided to take this conversation to the floor because we're going to talk about footwear and foot care for Carnival. Now, this is a super important topic because costume aside, if your footwear or foot care is not right, you are going to be miserable. Now, I have almost 19 years of military experience, so I have an idea as to how to take care of my feet when it's time to endure long treks. But for an everyday person, this is just not going to be common sense. So in front of me, I have a myriad of different shoes that I have either worn or I have seen other people wear on the road. And we're going to go through the different styles talk about the benefits and the uh, negatives along with some tips about how to take care of your feet. So the first thing I want to tell you is that good foot care is just as important as the footwear that you're going to wear on the road. And if you're a lady, you probably have a standard of getting regular pedicures, you know, shaving down the calluses. Sometimes some ladies like to grow out their toenails for aesthetics purposes, and that's all fine and dandy, but your typical foot care routine may not be good for carnival. So soft feet is just not the greatest thing to have. There's a reason why our, our bodies uh, develop calluses. If you are a weightlifter or you do gymnastics or you do any type of movements where you have to hold on to something for a very long time, you will find that initially that activity is very, very tender on your hands, but over time your hands will develop calluses in order to protect your hands when you're doing those activities. It's the same concept for carnival. So while we adore our baby soft feet, you know, because we like to play footsie or we don't want any calluses or any ashiness or anything showing on our feet, that softness of your feet when it comes time for carnival is going to be an issue. You're going to have some very, very tender feet. If you're going to go to get your feet done all the time, you're shaving or doing chemical treatments to knock off your calluses. The first thing I'm saying, ladies, and this may sound absolutely foreign to you, is go get a pedicure by all means, but about six to eight weeks out from your carnival jump, especially at Miami Carnival, I highly recommend that you stop shaving off your calluses. You can soften them a little bit, but those calluses is what's going to protect your feet during that long duration of time when you're fitting and when you're on the road. Because I promise you, tender, soft feet are just not going to make it. And sometimes it doesn't matter what type of shoe that you choose to purchase. It's not going to make a difference if you don't have that protection on your feet first. Another thing that ladies like to do is they like to grow out their toenails. Um, me personally, I am still aspiring to get back into half marathon training um, and I'm starting to run longer distances again. So I keep my toenails low. I cut them as low as possible. And the reason why is if you've never had sore toenails, it is miserable and it lasts for days. And the reason why is because your toenail, as you're dancing or moving down the road, is going to bump into your toe box occasionally. Now imagine having very, very long toenails and it's constantly bumping into that toe box. Sore toenails is not very fun. So one of the things I recommend that ladies do is right before carnival, get them cut down as low as possible. Ladies, I promise it'll grow back. A lot of people are gonna wear leggings on the road. And so I'm gonna give you like a really quick tip to make sure that you're gonna be absolutely comfortable as you rock leggings. Just because you're wearing leggings does not mean that you should not wear socks. Perfect match by Carnivalista, by the way. So if you're taking a look at your leggings here, you can see the little nets are just sticking and jabbing into the toes. And while having it on for a few minutes, it's not really that big a deal. Over time, you're going to have some tender toes just from the netting of your stocking. So this is what I recommend that you do. Put your sock on before you put on your leggings. And that gives you some cushion and some protection to prevent your toes from getting jabbed by the webbing of your fishnets. There you have it. Now we're gonna talk about shoes and I've got like a myriad of shoes next to me that we're just gonna go through. Some of these shoes I've actually seen people wear on the road, some of them I have, and some you would not catch me dead in and I'm gonna talk about why. These shoes, ladies and gentlemen, these are, these are the shoes that I like to call, we're gonna take pictures in these shoes now. I actually used to teach pole dancing so I actually got a pair of a couple pair of pleasers in my closets, but sometimes you guys have actually seen me um, in these shoes in some of my content. Now, I actually saw a lady wear these on the road, and um, I will tell you that she got off the truck, danced around a little bit, and she got back on the truck. 
these shoes are not road friendly. So if you're thinking about it, just don't. And you, talk, you start to think about the plastic that's in the toe, yeah, it may stretch, but ultimately it still digs into your toes. And imagine trying to walk miles in these. It's just not comfortable. And pleasers aren't made to be comfortable shoes anyway. So I don't know why some people think that these are a fantastic um, idea to rock these on the road. Take pictures on, in these, take them off, and go find you some comfortable shoes, okay? I bullshit you not, I have actually seen ladies wear flats on the road, flats. Sometimes they're thongs, sometimes they're slide-ins, um, sometimes they wear like the little gladiator sandal, and they're, and they're very cute, they, and you know, they make a lot of colors, and I can see why some people may want to incorporate these into their costumes, but they have absolutely no support. They're flat, they're stiff, they're hard, and while these are made for some light walking, they're not made for you to walk and chip down the road for miles and stand on your feet for hours at a time. And just keep in mind that if you're going down to Miami Carnival, you're probably gonna attend some fets too. So what happens to your feet by the time you hit Miami Carnival is gonna be an accumulative effect. So it's gonna be very important that while you're doing all, these, all this fetting, that you take care of your feet from the very beginning. And that includes some of the fets that you go to first. Super cute, no support, your feet are going to eventually hurt. Not to mention, sweat you're gonna start sliding it's just and then it's gonna to start to hit inside in between the toes just don't don't wear these okay just I, I really don't recommend these a lot of people they see shoes when they're shopping for um, a shoe to match their costume and they might see something like this and they're like oh my god these these this color scheme is dope as a matter of fact I can see some men costumes with with this just this color scheme but these are Nike Metcons these shoes are designed for cross training primarily for CrossFit. Even the inside of the shoe is designed so that you could uh, attain rope climbs. But this heel here, this heel here is insanely stiff. Um, it has some give in the toe, but none in here, okay? Because these are actually designed for you to, able to be able to do very, very heavy lifts. With minimal support, your feet are going to hurt. These are pretty, but they are not designed for long walks or long dances on the road. At minimum, I, when I talk to people about Nike Metcons, I tell people that this shoe is designed for no more than an 800 meter run because it, the support is just not there. So if this is made for short runs, this is definitely not made for um, long treks down the road. It's very important that when you look at a shoe, you find out what it is designed for. If the shoe is designed for long walks, cool. But if it's designed for cross training or, or CrossFit, or if they're, if they're categorized as lifters, these are not the types of shoes that you wanna wear on the road at all. No support whatsoever. Your feet will be screaming, I promise. Another type of shoe I see a lot of people wearing is that they might bust out the good old Converse. Now, the Converse is a classic shoe, but the Converse is also a shoe that people wear to go weightlifting. And the reason why is because the sole is very stiff. This is along the same recommendations as your Nike Metcons or your lifting shoe. This is not really made for you to endure very, very long distances. Now, one of the things that I would recommend if you do decide to wear a pair of Converse, I highly recommend in, that you go to a store and pick you up a pair of um, insoles and place them in there that will provide you some added comfort. But you might be able to get away with it with the Nike Metcons, but the Metcons are just, and Tali's too stiff. These Converse's here, they do have some give, um, and so you might be able to get away with buying you a pair of inserts. I buy the Dr. Scholl's, probably like the cheapest ones to give me the most, uh, give me some good cushion, and then I'll go from there. But this is definitely not a shoe that I recommend that anybody wear on the road. It's just not very comfortable over time. These are actually my favorite shoes. And the reason why I say that these are my favorite shoes, um, if you guys have never, never see, met me personally, I'm actually kind of short, I'm 5'1". Um, so I, when I first started playing mass, I gravitated toward a sneaker, but that had a wedge. Um, these are the Nike Sky Dunk Highs. Um, they don't make these anymore. Um, which is why I've started to gravitate towards other styles of shoes, but I've always loved a wedge sneaker. Sky Dunk High gives me about two inches or so um, in height, so it lengthens my leg and lifts my butt a little bit more. Um, and it's actually a very, very comfortable sneaker. I actually have three pair of Nike Sky Dunk Highs, and every once in a while I will scour the, 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 cor the outer corners of the internet to see if there's any other great colors of the Nike Sky Dunk Highs in my size, which is actually kind of hard to find because I'm a size six. Um, these shoes are actually very comfortable. As you can see, they're very much so broken in. Um, 
but these are actually gotten a little bit older, so I would probably put a pair of insoles in these, but these are broken in so well and have such great support. I really don't require a lot of um, additional support uh, with these shoes. Um, I actually went with this pair of shoes for Houston Carnival. Um, and these were like only $43 on Amazon. Um, and I went with these because I needed some height because I'm short. Um, like I said, the heel um, also lengthens the legs, but what I did like about these boots is that they were platform in that even though these were about, I think, three and a half to four inches high, um, this took off about an inch, um, therefore reducing stress on the uh, ball of my feet and would also kind of re reduce the risk of my toes jamming into the box of the um, of the shoe. So I went with these. Now, if you end up buying some cheap Amazon shoes, you're always going to need a pair of insoles. Like these soles are very, very stiff and unforgiving. And so is the inside. So whatever insole that they have in here, which is actually insanely hard, whatever insole that they have in here is going to be cheap. It's going to be firm. So you're going to want to get um, an insole to put inside of your shoe. Um, and that is what I did for these. These were actually pretty comfortable. Another thing that I also made sure that I did before I went out there because I bought them, I didn't buy them in advance long enough to walk around and then break these in very well, is I actually expanded the, the toe box with a pair of, I don't know what they call these, yeah, shoe, a shoehorn. Um, I expanded the toe box to give you a little bit more wiggle room. I did forget to cut down my toenails because it was my first time back on the road and I didn't remember all of my tips and tricks. So I did end up with sore toenails. Um, another thing I recommend for you is, especially if it's still going to be a little bit narrow, you can get you some corn uh, pads to put on, this, on your pinky toes so the pinky toes aren't sore once you come out of your boot. Some people are going to pick up some very flashy, fashionable shoes. Um, so one of the biggest things I recommend with people choosing to buy a nice flashy shoe, um, these are the Nike Air Max 90 in gold. Um, and people, some people wouldn't think to wear these down the road. They don't want to crease these sneakers at all. But some people um, want to wear these on the road. What I will tell you is you need to break these in. To be perfectly honest with you, if your brand new sneaker does not have a toe crease before you actually get out on the road, you're doing yourself a disservice because if you've broken in sneakers before, then you know what it's like to have that stiff part that needs to bend, jab you in your feet occasionally until everything softens. You don't want to wait until carnival for it to finally start to do that. So I highly recommend that any shoe that you choose to wear, you break it in and make sure you have a really, really good toe crease broken in before you actually get that on the road. Now, I just went through a whole bunch of different types of shoes. Um, and so when it comes down to choosing your carnival shoe, at the end of the day, comfort is key. Comfort is key. If you put your foot in a shoe and it's not comfortable and it's just not, you don't think it's going to do well with an insole in it, then just don't go with that shoe. Find something else to wear. Um, I have had some tragedies on the road in my first couple of years because I just did not know any better or I thought, you know, the route was short. I could get away with some heels and I ended up barefoot at Atlanta DeKalb Carnival sitting on the back of a truck. It was not a good look. Don't let that be you, okay? Okay, so we're going to do a quick recap. First thing we talked about is good foot care. Letting those calluses develop on your feet at least between six to eight weeks before your carnival road experience. Cut down your toenails very, very, very low, as low as you can. And also consider putting on your socks before you put your leggings on. I went through different styles of shoe and why I thought they were good or not good for the road experience. And I talked about my own personal preferences. I also talked about the importance of fantastic insoles, and I talked about considering getting shoehorns to stretch out your toe box um, to, for added comfort of your toes while you're on the road. Today, comfort is key. It's super important for you to find a shoe that's going to be comfortable. If you decide to go a little bit cheaper on your shoe by going through Amazon, that is completely fine. Just know that most likely you're going to need a pair of insoles to make those shoes more comfortable. I talked about making sure that you break your shoes in several weeks before your carnival road experience and make sure that the toe crease of your shoe is good and broken in so it doesn't get broken in on your toes while you're on the road. Experienced masqueraders, go ahead and sound off below with your tips and tricks about how to make your feet comfortable or your tips and tricks on footwear. Like I said, this space is a community. It's all about helping each other. I hope this video was super helpful to you. Until then, take care.